background is in mathematics, specifically computational algebra. I don't know if that counts as compu well, scientific computing, but since my undergraduate years, I've used a lot of, well, they're called computational algebra software to do mathematics. So these systems are Pari, Gap, Singular, Magma, Sage, Mathematica, Maple, Macaulay, 2, Polymake, and all of these systems, apart from Sage, actually has their own language. That's, I don't know, a lot of different software. I've been using Python for more than 10 years now for, I don't know, developing all kinds of things, scripts, web applications, and later on with Sage math Mathematics. I, just at the beginning of my PhD, I had the good fortune of meeting Sage. If you haven't heard about it, I really recommend that you go to the website. That's an open source computer mathematics software, which also brings a lot of the free computational algebra software together. There is actually, so some of the software is proprietary, proprietary commercial, Magma, Mathematica, Maple, for instance. But actually in computational algebra, there is a well-established tradition of publishing free software, GPL licensed software. So all the rest are GPL. And I've been using Gen2 Linux. You'll see why that matters for more than 10 years on all my machines. And for the last two years, I was working in the University of Kaiserslautern in the, it's a priority program in Germany. It's called Algorithmic and Experimental Methods in Algebra, Geometry and Number Theory. It's a collaboration of about 30 projects in mathematics where people want to use some different subset of the software that is listed there. So the problem was to bring these together and you know, put them on the same system for different users all around. So then we came to the idea of distributions. I'll say what I mean about reproducibility. It might go beyond the general definition of you know, trying to verify the results. Uh, what I want to do with software that is you know, published in a paper, that is mentioned in a paper, not usually published, is to be able to build on it. You know, when I see the algorithm, besides just running the same thing to replicate the experiment or just repeat what they have done, I also want to test you know, potential improvements, tweak the results or parameter, tweak certain things, and maybe get new results out of this. So it's not only enough to have access to the <coughs> source code or the data that people have, I want to be able to work with it to build on it. This then brings on the question of you know, how do we actually, so if I pick up the software, not you know, only a month after it was published, but a year after, two years after the paper, will it still be able to, I don't know, function? Most <coughs> software that I use depends on a lot of other pieces, mostly C libraries, because if you want to do anything non-trivial in mathematics, you might want polynomial arithmetic, you might want you know, linear algebra, factorization, and all of these come in different C libraries that you want to put together. If you just published you know, your C code, if your dependency is moved on in the meantime, it just won't work. So you will need to do something else. Uh, something about the distribution question. This was posted by Neil Sloan of the online database of integer sequences on the developer list for Pari. This is a software in algebraic number theory. And he writes, I would like to thank everyone who responded to my question about installing Pari on an iMac. The consensus was that it would be simplest to install Sage, which includes Pari and many other things. I tried this and it worked. It is such a shock when things actually work. So to give an idea of, you know, the scale of many other things that he's talking about. This is the dependency tree for Pari. It is very small, so it depends on the read line library and Empire, that's a fork of GMP. Most Macs clearly don't have you know, the development headers for read line. Maybe they don't have Empire either. <coughs> so he installed Sage instead of this. The graph could have been laid out better, but so this is the dependency graph of all the packages included in Sage. It includes 93 vertices. Now it is at about a 400 megabyte download these days, and it takes a couple of hours to actually in install if you're not moving from a binary. So from this, you went there. there. A distribution helps. That is more flexible than Sage. So <coughs> there comes Lemonade. It's supposed to be a 
distribution of scientific software, also a platform for development of software. Of course, this is, well, I should emphasize that it's not a finished product in any form. This is you know, a call for help, as well as comments and contributions or possible collaborations. So it's, I say, a platform in the making. What does Lemonade do? So it's a customizable distribution of scientific software. It includes more than 800 packages now. That's mostly because it's powered by Gen2 in the background, and I can borrow packages that you know, Gen2 developers have worked hard to form in the first place. It can install dependencies, keeping track of their different versions, conflicts, so you can say that my software only works with version 1.2 and not you know, 2 something. It uses the compilers and tools on the host system, so you don't have to install a new tool chain altogether. And you can do this all in your home directory. This is very useful if you're working with you know, supercomputers that you don't have root access to. This, you know, it's usually the case for me that I do things on my laptop, it's not big enough, I move, and Lemonade can handle all the installation. Besides the usual package management, it can also set up a development environment for certain packages. I will show what I mean by that. And using this development environment mechanism, you can also share your code, of course, going through Git or Mercurial or other version control systems. Uh, how it works? It's, so you have your host system, which is under the yellow line in the picture. On top of it, it sets up the usual libraries that everything depends on. And then you can start installing your packages. Most of the labels on that gra picture are from you know, mathematics, the software that I'm familiar with. NumPy is there, and Sage sits on the top because it depends on everything. So above this, you can just choose what you want to install. And the installation process is supposed to be only you just enter the package database, basically. But that's what you download. You say you can choose a flavor. So you can actually say that I want to install Singular or Sage. But if you say plain, it will just do the basic bootstrapping. And when you type make, it will download packages from the internet and start compiling them. And when I say a development environment, after the plain install is done, you can type LMND is the script that drives everything. LMND, devel, Pynac. Pynac is the C++ library that is used to represent symbolic expressions in Sage, which I maintain. So after you type that command, it will go to the Mercury repository for Pynac, check out that version, put it under the devel Pynac directory, and then pass the write options to configure and run make make install. The write options are not that trivial when you consider that you're putting everything in a different prefix. You have to specify the prefix, libdir, and all these things. And if there are depends, so PyNAC has to de detect Python, for instance, it has to find these in the path. So it's not that trivial. <coughs> but of course, these are straightforward. The main point is if you want, if you do this on you know, your computer and then you need to do it on your colleague's computer, then a supercomputer, it gets cumbersome after a while, so it's good to have all this scripted. And after you have this set up, you can go into that directory and edit the code. If you just want to you know, fix a bug by changing a line, you can do that, type make install. You'll see your changes in the Lemonade environment where all the libraries have access to. Lemonade is a distribution. It's based on Gen2. There are a lot of different distribution alternatives. And this seems to be a popular area, so everybody's coming up with their own, like I did. Sage had the build system for many years now. And I think a lot of projects in the Python community actually used the SPKGs, the Sage build, build system. There are also custom-made ones, like those used by mathematics packages, or if you've heard of you know, Conda, EasyBuild, Hashdist, I guess, and you know, lots of others. I will just cons compare Lemonade to a couple of these things. First, I don't think virtual machines or CDE or these approaches uh, solve the problem that you know, I am trying to address. They are, of course, great for capturing the you know, state or preserving a certain snapshot. And if you want to just repeat the exact experiment that the author did in their paper, you can do that because it's supposed to be the same environment. But once you want to go a bit further, then you will, if it's a virtual machine, it contains all kinds of you know, a desktop environment, maybe, or network drivers and so on. And you don't want to work in that environment. 
It also freezes the state of the dependencies, and you know, if bugs were fixed in the meantime, or a certain linear algebra function was optimized to work twice as fast, you won't be able to see those improvements. If you try to you know, do it in the virtual machine, that's a whole new adventure, let's say. CDE is designed for binaries only. And if you supply it with different inputs, then it might not access the same set of binaries, so it will not you know, work just as well. So virtual machines don't solve my problem. And when you dis consider distributions, most popular GNU Linux, distri GNU Linux distributions do not actually satisfy our needs because in research code, we actually want to re release our code you know, rapidly instead of waiting to check if it is so stable and if it fits well every, with everything. So we want something flexible and that has a rapid release cycle. So Lemonade chooses Gen 2 for this. I will not go through all the parts of the architecture. I will just show. So Gen 2 eBits are great. I have to say this. Because they are standardized, they are supported by more than three package managers. There is actually a specification on the internet that you can find. Of course, they are not the perfect description of a package. There are you know, certain parts that could be improved, but it's the best trade-off, in my opinion. And it builds on Gen2 prefix, which already handles all the installation in your home directory aspects. I will show how the eBuild handles the dependence. So this is how you specify dependencies. It's a bash you know, string added with all kinds of you know, new syntax. And you can say that if you, know, you want to use NumPy 1.7, it will get you know, this dependency, otherwise it's 1.5. Or you can say I want greater than this version or you know, equivalent to GVAR 3.7 and not a new version or an older version. <coughs> more architecture, which I will go through. One more comparison. Uh, there's also this great idea for a fun package manager. In, well, it's a functional package manager, Nix, and there are different implementations of it, like hash disks, and there's also, yeah. The idea is great because you can install everything in their own directory, and then they get to use you can have different copies, you can have snapshots. It's you know great, but this increases the burden on packaging. You have to specify your dependencies very clearly. And what we want to do most of the time is to actually you know, get on with our work. So most scientists will not want to think about you know, what are the exact dependencies of my software. You'll just roll a package and want to send it to your colleague. So if you go with the you know, great idea from computer science, it might not work so well. This is also like you use a language which has strict type checking and a compiler, or you use Python, which you know, lets you duct type. Uh, so this was the distribution part, which took a lot. Uh, then I, so there's also the question of keeping software alive. Continuous integration is the solution you know, that is used these days for this. But, and there are lots of solutions that you can use, like Travis gives you an online service where you can submit your software and it will automatically test it when you submit changes to your repository and you know, give you warnings. <coughs> this is not enough if your software is you know, reasonably large and you also need to install 10 or 15 dependencies because this just goes beyond their capacity to handle. So what we have is, since there is the package database and the dependency information already, we can actually keep track of the common paths in different mathematics packages, and most of them just need factorization and the basic building blocks, so you can make them reuse the whole architecture. <coughs> there are still scale, so we use BuildBot because it's more configurable. <coughs> and we have a Google Summer of Code project by Remus, who is trying to solve the scalability issues and extend this further. I will very quickly show the site. So why should authors you know, invest time to work with something like this? I agree completely that the main problem in reproducibility is one of economics, and you know, people do not have the motivation in the first place because of the publish and perish uh, problem, uh, reality. So what, what, what we can do is to help people track citations to software. One thing that we do in Sage is to show what software was used in the background for a certain computation. For instance, so primary decomposition is a basic concept in commutative algebra, and you can compute it by these lines. <laughs> then if you wonder you know, what system was used in the background, you can say 
print citations. So there is a process running in the background where you can annotate all the functions that get called, which will add the citation information to a central database. And in this case, the packages, so the first citation is actually the paper where the algorithm used for this computation was published. The second one is the computer algebra system which did the real computation. The third, oh sorry, third is the computer algebra system. And the second one is the package inside that computer algebra system. So Gerhard Pfister, Wolfram Decker, and Hans Schoenemann are the people who implemented the algorithm. So we are using their implementation. If we get to share citations this way and you know these get included in papers, then of course you have more motivation to polish the software that you put online or you know make it reusable to help others instead of just saying that you know here is my computation and if anybody wants to take it up they can redo the whole research again basically. I am running out of time. So a wrap up Lemonade is a software distribution that is supposed to make your packages easily accessible. It also provides a development platform where you can share your code with your colleagues and you know, do your own development. It enables research, researchers to build on existing tools without fear of losing users to baffling installation instructions. And we have contributors. My main contributor is from New Zealand, Francois Bisset. He's a Sage on Gen 2, but the, the main developer of Sage on Gen 2, and many colleagues from Kaiserslautern and other institutes around Germany mainly. Questions? MacOS is the most common that is used by mathematicians, I guess. Uh, Windows is the other, you know, it's actually used by the most uh, used, uh, mathematicians, I guess. That's the challenge. So Gen2 prefix is what I build on. It is supposed to work on Windows. It uses these Unix extensions, the Interix, but Interix has been discontinued by Microsoft. There's a challenge there, and then you're left with Sigwin. But if you want to distribute binaries, it's easier than, you don't need all the Unix scripts. You can just generate the binaries and distribute that. But it doesn't do that yet. Assuming that you don't already have a personal reply, two requisite packages, how long does it take to sort through the Sage example, um, use the paper and so on, and then use it to sort through other sources? Uh, Assuming you don't have the prerequisite packages, how long does it take to build Sage on Lemonade compared to Sage, was the question. It is probably, it depends on the distribution that you use. Sage builds its own compiler. I don't. So it should be slightly less. But if you already have a modern distribution, then Sage would also be about the same time. But uh, so at the moment, I do not detect the dependencies on the that are installed on the host. But since I use Gentoo's package manager portage, there is actually the functionality to specify these packages are all on the system, do not you know, install them again. If that is added, then it will be far less because you, will, you won't need to do read line and free type and all these things that Sage comes with. It is possible to ship with a compiler. So Gen2 prefix actually installs everything. What I did was to take that part out. <laughs> you could do that. So the recipe for you know building your tool chain is there. I just disabled it because you know it's good to start from a host with a sane compiler. So there you can ask the sysadmin to fix it. Thank you.